The word of the week this week is a personal favorite. Let's take a look. The verb form of this week's word is anagenosko, which means I read. It means to know something exactly, to recognize something that you've already known. Uh, there's a noun form, anagnosis, which means the public reading of a declaration or a proclamation. So in the days before the printing press, when information needed to be disseminated through large groups of people, it required someone to go out and read the declaration or the proclamation. And the act of, of informing the people thusly was called anagnosis. Back to the main word of the week, anagnosco. Uh, why do I like this so much? One is because I, from my earliest years, I've been a big reader. And number two, I love the etymology of it. So ana, again, and gnosko, I know. It's literally to know something again. So if you think about it, anytime something gets written down, before it can be written down, it first must be known. And every time thereafter that it's read, it is known again. So the verb, I read, is literally, I know again. Whether I'm knowing it for, the, whether as the reader, I'm knowing it for the first time, it was previously known or it couldn't be written down. But if it's something, a note that I've written to myself, or if it's information I've already known, every time I read it, it's, it is still known again. It's used in two primary ways in the New Testament. We're going to look at the first one, which is Paul exhorting the church in Thessalonica to um, read his letter aloud to all the brethren in the city. Uh, let's take a look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 27. This is the ESV with the Koine supplied. I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. And here, read, is anagnosthenai. It's, a, it's an aorist, passive, infinitive. So it's saying, this letter to be read. So that's what he's putting them under an oath to God to do. Like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sort of binding you with this task, that this letter should be read aloud to, every, to all the brethren in the city. That's the first way we see it used. The other common way is to describe reading the Old Testament. And we're going to see Jesus use it in Mark chapter 2, verse 25. Again, ESV, again, Koine supplied. And he said to them, Have you never read, on ignote, what David did when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him? So <clears throat> the story is, Jesus and his disciples are walking along the road on a Sabbath and his disciples are plucking heads of grain from the side of the road and uh, rubbing off the husks and eating the grain. And his detractors say, look, you let your disciples work on the Sabbath. They're doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath. So Jesus says, have you not read? Did you never read the story about David? First thing is his audience 100% would know this story, right? And so even invoking the word, have you read, it, it calls it to be known again. They're not going to stop and pull out a book and read. He's asking them, have you never read this story about David? So, so they, they knew it again when they read it. And even just bringing up the reading of it causes them to know it again. Kind of fantastic, isn't it? So why did I choose this word for the week? Number one, because I love the word. Number two, there's a meme going around social media that talks about reading and how uh, a ridiculous number, a third of adults, never opened a book and read a complete book again after high school. 78% um, of books that are purchased are started and never completed. Um, there are some ridiculous numbers about college grads and uh, graduate school grads uh, who, after they finish their formal education, never electively read a book again. Uh, and I find that heartbreaking and tragic. Books are where the knowledge is. Words are how we give ideas to one another. And 
the idea that we would close ourselves off, especially in this age where we think all the knowledge of the world is at our fingertips, closing ourselves off to this treasure, uh, whether it be millennia old or something that was just written, um, seems to make no sense to me. There's a rich storehouse of stuff out there for us to know. And every time we choose to read, we can know it again. So Anagonosko, I read, I know again, is our word of the week. Uh, for we plural, Anagonoskomen, uh, we read. Every time we read, whatever it is we read, we get to know again. <laughs> and you can't go wrong knowing again. Hope that was good for you. If it was, like, share, subscribe. And uh, until next time, Kars Kairani Humi, grace and peace to you.